proclaim that his name is exalted. We declare your majesty. We proclaim that your name is Well, good morning. Is God bless you. It is so good to be with you again today. And I pray that all is well, that the Lord be glorified in your life. In Jesus' name. to receive today. And we will be having communion also today. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that's about to go forth in this place. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would Anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth, and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you right now, Lord, that we're going to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the glorious and mighty and majestic name of Jesus. And God, we give you all the praise. And everyone say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Maybe see. Amen. We've been dealing with an area on this last three weeks, or last two weeks rather, on uh, the whole on faith, dealing with the faith as a supernatural force. Amen. It's a powerful force. Amen. Faith in God is a supernatural, powerful force. And I believe that. God is going to speak to your hearts today through this message as he did on that time past. Amen. Amen. So we're going to uh, just believe that he's going to speak to your hearts once again. Glory to God. Well, I want to just thank all of you for joining us today. You that are listening by the online and you that are uh, viewing us online, we'd like to thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. And would like to say, uh, may God just minister to your heart today. Just make a decision today that you're going to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Just make a decision because this is your season. This is your hour. This is the time that God is going to speak to our lives, to our hearts. Amen. And just know that you're not alone because God said he would never leave you nor forsake you. No matter where you go, God is with you. Amen. God is with you. And so today I want to just, uh, just declare with you just declare the word of God. Amen. And just know that what we do here today is for the kingdom of God and for his glory. Amen. And so I'm going to sing you a song and we're going to get into the word. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord.
supernatural force that God has placed within you. Amen. That when you begin to understand it, as you begin to tap into that supernatural force, you re then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Rivers of living water. How is that going to happen? Because of the nature of God that's on the inside of you. It's going to begin to spring forth in the news of life. Glory to God. Amen. So when we look at that, we can, we can see that that is a true fact because the Bible tells us in Proverbs, in Proverbs, I'm just going to turn that real quick because it just comes to my spirit. In Proverbs chapter 4 and, and Proverbs 4 and verse number, verse number 20, Proverbs 4 and 20 says, My son, attend to my words, and cry thy ear to my saying, for, and let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now notice what it says in verse number 22, for they are life 
for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. So he said, keep your heart with all diligent, for out of it are the issues of life. So when we're looking at God, what God is saying, we see here that that life, that, that life that God is talking about is a supernatural force that God has placed within us. And as we hold to what God has said, as we do, and as we honor to what as we honor God and what He has said, we will see that supernatural force rising up within us, declaring God's goodness and God's best, amen, in our lives. So God is doing it, folks. This is not something that we are doing. This is something that God is doing, and this is something He's already done in us. Amen. But we have to get on our, we have to do our part. We have to study to show ourselves approved. A workman under God may not be ashamed, right divide the word of truth. Amen. So we have to study and we have to see what God is saying to us. <clears throat> Amen. Because God has given us the victory in this dark age. We have we, we live in a we live in, we live in a in an age where darkness is trying to overcome, try to put out every light that God has established. And so our job is to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. And how are we going to do that? By standing on the promises of God. Because see, standing on the promise of God, meditating upon the Word of God, and, 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 and reading the Word of God, you cause your faith to be strengthened. Amen? And then when you act upon that what you have studied, that what you have meditated upon, when you act upon it, you are you're releasing a supernatural force that God has placed within you. Amen? So this when you will see the Word of God manifesting in your life like never before. And I know that we we read the Word of God and it says over in the book of Mark. In the book of Mark, I'm just going to turn there real quick and just, just talk to my spirit again. Amen? So I'm just going to turn there out of obedience to the Holy Spirit. In obedience to the Holy Spirit, they're going to turn there. And, uh, uh, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 and verse number, <clears throat> verse number 22 said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Now he's not talking about the natural kind of faith. He's talking about the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith is a supernatural force that's on the inside of us. And as we, and as we, are, and as we have faith in God, as we believe and have faith in God, we, are, we will be releasing that supernatural force. Now, notice what it says in verse number 23. Because, see, your natural faith can't do what verse 23 is talking about. But your faith in God can. Because that faith in God is not your ability that's going to, going to, going to be releasing uh, the power. It's going to be the Spirit of God that's in you that's going to be releasing the power. Amen. So, so it says right here in verse number 23, it says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. <coughs> now notice he's talking to a mountain. He's not talking to a rock. He's not talking to a, 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 a rock trying to turn a rock into, into bread. But he could. And he can. But he's talking to a mountain. Amen. <coughs> he's gone beyond the rock. And he's talking to the mountain. Notice what he said in verse number 23 again. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. So we see that this supernatural force of faith is not established just by reading. It is established in our heart by meditating and reading, and also it activated as we speak what we have read and meditate upon. So that supernatural force of faith is something that God has placed within you. Well, when did you get it? You received it at new birth. When you were born again, everything that you need to live a victorious, overcoming Christian life was was, was placed within you. Amen. But because we have not studied, because we have not uh, uh, believed, because we have not walked according to the word, because we have not actually believed the word, we have not seen the victory that God intends for us to receive in the word. 
a lot of us have not seen those victories. Now, that's not, not, not everyone, because a lot of people have learned the principles and have learned the spiritual laws and have learned to apply them properly. Therefore, they are seeing these supernatural forces of God that's working in and through them, and many lives have been touched and changed because of it. Amen? But God is not looking, God is looking at the whole body right now. Because it's time for the body to take a hold of who they are. Begin to understand who they are and what God has placed within them. Because you see, we gonna have to give an account one day, and we need to know that what we're giving an account for. Amen. Because God has placed within us the ability to turn this world upside down with the gospel or to reach out and to bring healing to uh, 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 the people of the land that is wounded, that have been bruised, that's been sick, amen. He has given us the ability and the power to cast out devils and to heal the sick and to raise the dead, amen. But now that we know, because we have not studied along that line, because we have not meditated upon the word along that line, we are not seeing these manifestations along that line. Because this doesn't, this doesn't come by just reading. This comes by spending time with God. Because, see, God is talking about a supernatural force that he has placed within us. And the only way it's going to be released through us is that we spend time with him. Amen. Spend time with him in the word and in prayer and in meditating on the word. Amen. And then not just spend the time with him in the word and in prayer and meditate on the word. By acting, but by acting on the word. Amen. Because it's the acting on the word that causes your faith to grow. It's not just reading the word, meditating on the word. <coughs> that's what causes it to that's what causes it to, to, to germinate inside your spirit. But when you act upon it, that releases that force, that supernatural force that pushes darkness out of the way and causes the will of God to be made manifest right there on the spot. And this is what the world is waiting to see, the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. The world is grown and traveled and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not just people that will talk the talk, but people that are walking the walk. Amen. People that are demonstrating the word of God as God has given us. Hold glory to his name. Because he tells us right here that verily I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain. So the so the, 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 the force is not in just reading, but the force in speaking. And you have to speak it by faith. You have to speak it by faith. Amen? Because that's where you begin to, uh, 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 how do you say, you, you begin to, to allow Jesus Christ to come alive on the inside of you. And then you can look at yourself like 1 John 4 and 4 said, Ye are of God, little church, and have overcome them. Who are them? Them that are in the world. The one that he said right here in 1 John 4, 4, 1 John 4, 5 and 4. Amen. Because see, our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. <coughs> and so God wants us to come to that place of understanding and seeing ourselves in that area. Amen. In that area. So we have to understand. So when we see that, when we see what God is saying, just begin to walk in. Do your best to walk in. Trust God that God will guide you through every avenue of that area of your life that he's called you to walk in. Amen. Because your faith released God's ability in the earth as, a, as the early church walked. When you walk by faith and you're walking in the, in the presence of God and you're walking in the spirit of God, your faith, when you release your faith, you release your faith just the same way as the apostles and the prophets of old. Amen? Because it's not you that is doing the work. It's God doing the work through you. Amen, amen, and amen. It's God doing the work through you. And are you ready for that? Are you ready to see what God's going to do to you, do in you and through you? Are you ready to see what God is going to do in you and through you? Because see, it's your season. This is your hour. This is your time. But you got to be ready. You got to be willing to take a bold step of faith and do what God has called you to do without even thinking about it. Without even thinking about it. Amen. Because God is going to. Because God is looking for someone. His eyes running throughout the earth right now. 
searching for someone whom he can show himself strong through. Amen. And you need to be one to stand up to the plate and say, God, you don't have to look no further. Here am I. Send me. I'll go. As Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 6, send me. I'll go. Amen. But you got to be willing to go into a place that you've never gone before. Like the Star Trek, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Amen. And you got to be willing to do something that you've never done before. Amen. Just say, for instance, he says right here in, in, uh, in, in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. You got to be willing to say to the mountain. You got to be willing to speak to the mountain. Amen. So you got you to gotta be just like that little child. You got to have the childlike faith. You got to have a faith as of a grain of mustard seed. Amen. And you got to be, you got to know that that is a, everything that is, a, that is enough to do what God wants you to accomplish. That is enough to do what God wants you to do. And you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed of what God is saying to you. Just go and take a bold stand and declare what God has given you. Well, you're going to have to do it. So this, this, is, this, is, how you, this is how you develop this supernatural force of faith. By standing on the promise of God. Amen. Now let's go back to uh, verse number. Let's go back to 1 John chapter <clears throat> 5 again. 1 John chapter 5. Now let's look at verse number 5. Let's look at verse number 4 and 5 again. For, who, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. And it says even our faith. Even our faith. Well we know from a natural standpoint the world can swallow us up. But when we walk in Christ, when we walk in the Word, when we walk in the Spirit, we become more than conquerors. Amen. Because the greater one lives on the inside of us. Amen, amen, amen. Look at 1 John 4, 4. Look at 1 John 4 and verse 4. Amen. Ye are of God, little children. I did quote that to you a while ago, but since we're so close to it, let's just read it right now. Because, see, you need to see and know and understand that God is with you, that you are not alone. And as you begin to, to take that step of faith, that you are not going to be alone, that God's going to be with you. Look what he says right here in 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, he's in you. The force is with you, amen, and in you. And that is the force of God, folks. That is the force of God. It's in you and shall be with you, amen. He's with you and in you, amen. And he's ready to do the work that he come to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so it said in 1 John, 1 John 5, and verse 5 said, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So you've got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Not only must you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. <coughs> Romans chapter 10. Amen. Let's just go here for a minute. Because see, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to, you, you, you're on a journey right now. And this journey is going to carry you to a place that you never thought you would ever make it to. But God is saying to us today, this is the time, this is the season that we enter in to his glory. Amen. That we enter to his glory. Notice what it said right here in verse in Romans chapter 10 and verse number, verse number 9 said, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice what he said again. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, if I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that God raised him from the dead, amen, then the Bible tells me right here in verse number 13, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and if I'm saved, then therefore I have God's ability in me because it was, his, it was by faith that I believed that I received salvation. Notice, your salvation didn't come just because, just because you, you heard somebody, it came because you believed what you heard. You believe what you heard and you received it, amen. <clears throat> you believe the message. You receive the message as 
as it was speaking directly to you. And that, my friend, opened up your heart to salvation, which opened up your heart to the God nature, which opened up your heart to the God kind of faith, which opened up your heart to the supernatural force that resides on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that supernatural force came at the day of your new birth. At your, that's, you, that's when you had your new beginning at new birth. Glory to God. Glory to God. And at that new birth, you receive the power to be, a, to be a light in this dark world. Amen. And that's why he tells us in, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, chapter 5, and verse 4. He says, and whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Because the world is full of darkness right now. And it's getting even darker. You know, when, when, when I, I was in my bed asleep one day, one, one, one night, and God took me in the spirit. And in the spirit, I saw a great big old tidal wave, and it was coming up from off the ocean. And, and, and when I saw this tidal wave coming off the ocean, it came and it came upon land and it kept going and rolling and rolling and rolling. And it, and it became, and that tidal wave that I was looking at became so gross, so full of darkness. And then I, and I began to speak and I began to say, oh God, what a great move of your spirit. And God spoke to me very, very strongly in my spirit. And he said, that is not a move of my spirit. This is the move of darkness and it's coming up on the face of the earth. And he said, warn my people for the end of all things is at hand. <coughs> and so I began to hear what the Spirit of God was saying. Amen. And so, so what we'll share with you now that God is showing us that if we don't stand up and declare what he said, releasing that supernatural force, that this darkness is going to is going to it's going to put out every light that there is. Amen. Because when I saw this darkness coming, it just like, it, it, it was putting out every light that was in its path. It was, it was covering every light that was in its path. And those lights represent the light of the church, folks. Those lights represent the Christians. And that light was being put out because of this darkness was coming and it was so strong and it was coming upon the face of the earth and God said, warn my people and I'm telling you, ever since then, I've had an urgency in my spirit to declare thus said the Lord, regardless of what people say, regardless of what they think about me, regardless of whether they want to come and listen to me or not, I have a charge given by Almighty God to declare thus said the Lord, amen and when I do, I'm telling you, I know that I'm doing what God has called me to do. And I'm not going to back down from it. Because I know that what I'm sharing with you right now, God has said to, that you have been given a supernatural force. And it's on the inside of you. And it came at new birth. And it is the very nature of who God is. And that nature has the ability to cause you to rise up above the storms of life. That nature has the ability for you to even walk on water. Glory to God. It's a supernatural force that causes you to rise above the circumstances. Remember when Jesus said, Peter, when Peter said, Lord, it's me, you bid me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. It was a supernatural force of that word, come, that Peter walked on. He was walking on the word. He was not walking on the, he was not walking just on the water alone, but he was walking on the word that caused him to be sustained upon the water. That sustained him upon the water. It's the word of God that builds a foundation beneath you that causes you to stand in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulations. But it's that supernatural force that holds you up, which is the word of God. And as that word holds you up, you don't have nothing to do but to keep your eyes on the one who has spoken to you and not look at the situation, not look at how bad the waves are beating against you, how bolstered the wind is, is around you, how strong the rain is pouring down, but just keep your eyes on the one who called you, the one who spoke that rainbow word to your heart and said to you, come. Because it's that word, that supernatural force that is holding you up that's going to cause you to overcome that darkness that you're facing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Every one of us have a supernatural force on the inside of us who are born again. Amen. We all have that supernatural force on the inside of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, how do you know, Pastor? Well, let me take you to another scripture right now. I want to take you to the book of Mark, Gospel, chapter 5. The book of Mark, Gospel, chapter 5. Amen. I'm going to show you this woman. How I'm going to show you this man and this woman. I'm going to show you a man first. And then I'm going to show you a woman. How she will not allow her miracle to pass her by. We talk about her so much sometimes that, that sometimes we don't even see the full significance of what's going on in her life. Amen. But this woman, she heard that this man was passing by her house. What man I'm talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. And she began to rehearse in her heart. What was she doing? She was stirring up that supernatural force that was on the inside of her. Because see, every one of us have a supernatural force on the, in, on the inside of us. This woman, she, she heard, she had heard about this man. And I guarantee you, she began to believe that if he would just come by my if, if I could just see him, if I could just touch him, I would be made whole. What was she doing? She was building up in her spirit. She was building up her spirit of causing that supernatural force to become, to become not just dormant, but to become uh, active inside of her. It become active inside of her. And she began to rehearse it in her mind what she wanted from God. Amen. She began to rehearse it in her mind what she was going to get from God. And then she knows what he says right here in, in verse number 22. Let's go ahead and talk about it in verse number 22 for you. Before, she, before he came, before, before she came to him, there was a man that came to Jesus. No what he said. And behold, there coming one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he said, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now notice J. Iris, he know that his daughter was on her last breath. And so he began to release his faith in someone that he only heard about. And so he called to this man, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he began to tell him about his daughter, how sick she was. And if you will just come and lay your hand upon her, that she will live. And Jesus said, What did he say? Jesus went with him. Amen. Jesus went with him. And so he, and so he said, and so he said right here, and, and J.R. is the ruler of synagogue, and he besought him greatly, saying, My daughter lies at home at the point of death, and I pray thee, come and lay thy hand upon her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him. And Jesus went with him. Why? Because the man did not allow doubt to come out of his heart. My daughter, he, didn't, he, was a, he, didn't, he wasn't moaning, he wasn't complaining, he was not groaning and, and crying, but what he did, he came to Jesus in faith. What was he doing? He knew that there was something supernatural about this man. And so he, when he came to him, he came to him with expectancy. He came to him with expectation. He came to him knowing that his daughter would be made whole. Amen. How did he know? Because he was releasing a, a supernatural force that was on the inside of him. And that supernatural force was built up out of words. Words, folks. The Bible, it tells us plainly that the power is in the spoken word. Amen. So we have to, we have to build up our faith, but we have to build up in word form. Amen. Because when, it come, when we speak, we release that supernatural force. Amen? We release that supernatural force. Notice what he, notice what he said. Notice what he said. 
My daughter lies at the point of death, but come and lay your hand upon her that she may be healed and that she shall live. Amen. Notice he did not say it was too late for her, but I know that if you would come, she might be healed. No, he said, my daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hand on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Amen. And she shall live. So he came to Jesus knowing that there was something about him that was supernatural. Amen. And he did not allow any doubt to come out of God because doubt would have made void the desire of his heart. But as he was speaking the desire of his heart, I believe that Jairus was beginning, was beginning to feel the force of God's presence rising up within him. And when he said, come lay your head upon her, and she may be healed, and she shall live, he spoke faith over his daughter. Amen. He spoke faith over his daughter. Now Jesus agreed to go. He agreed to go. Now on his way, he was walking. Now here come this, all this commotion out in the street, and this woman was out in the bed of uh, 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 12 years disease, and she was uh, uh, was not getting any better. She was dying, and all of a sudden, she said that if I may, she said she figured out that who it was, and she when she figured, when she knew who it was, she made up in her mind, she made up in her heart, she started to exercise the God given abilities on the inside of her to believe. She began to exercise the God given abilities to believe, and when she began to believe. It began to activate that supernatural force on the inside of her spirit. And when she started making steps toward Jesus, every step she made toward Jesus, that force became stronger. That force became stronger. And that force became stronger. Hallelujah. And as she came to Jesus, she came and she touched the hem of his garment. By the time she got to Jesus, that force had become to have become so powerful and had come to the to the point that as she touched, her faith was released, and that supernatural force was so strong, it hit her. Woo! And she fell down to the ground, and she began to know in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus was stopped in his track because he felt the force of God leaving him. Glory to God. And he said, Who touched me? And his disciples said, Master, you see the people that have robbed you, and you say, Who touched me? And Jesus said, But somebody touched me. And he looked around to see, to look on her who had touched him. And the woman, knowing that what was done to her, was she, oh, she came and she kneeled down to him. She owned up to everything that she had been through. She began to tell him all that she had gone through. And notice what Jesus said to her, woman, your touch has made you whole. That's not what he said. He said, woman, your faith has made you whole. That was a supernatural force that went out of her, that rushed out and touched Jesus. It wasn't the touch of her hand. It was the touch of her faith, a supernatural force that caused the virtue of God to come down and enter her body and to heal her. Glory to God. And I'm telling you today, I declare to you today that each and every one of you that is a born again child of God, there's a supernatural force that's, that's lying dormant on the inside of you. But as you begin to meditate upon the word of God, as you begin to read the word of God, as you begin to pray, and as you begin to act on what you have learned from the word of God, you will begin to experience that supernatural force rising up and releasing out of you bringing forth deliverance, bringing forth healing into the hearts of the people that is God has sent you to. You may not know that you may have sent to someone, but when you get there, you'll find out that this person has a need, and you have the answer right in your heart, and as you begin to speak, God is going to deliver that person. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. You have a supernatural force on the inside of you. The ability of God is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you got to be willing to take a stand for God. You got to be willing to declare what God has said. You got to be willing to be ridiculed in the, in the face of people that do not believe you. Yeah. You got to be willing 
you got to be willing to, to, to be looked upon and, and, and be talked about. You get, and you can't allow it to affect you. You can't allow it to stop you from going forth and doing what God has called you to do. You got to be ready to do what God called you no matter what. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Yes. Glory to his name. And so as Jesus, as Jesus was, was standing there talking to the woman, the, the woman, the woman knowing what was done in what was done in her. She knew what had happened in her. And she began to tell him everything that she had gone through. And she looked, and Jesus looked at the woman and said, Daughter, thy faith. And I'm gonna say it like this: that supernatural force that you released made you whole. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Each and every one of us have a supernatural faith on the inside of us, but until we develop it, until we uh, uh, cause it to grow by meditating on the Word of God and, and, and reading and, and talking to the Father, spending quality time with the Father, it's just going to lie there. It's going to, it's going to be dormant. But when we open up our hearts, when we see what God has said to us, and when we begin to act upon it, we will see the hand of God in our lives on behalf of those who he has sent us to. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is talking to us today, folks. He's talking to us today. And we need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We need to hear it. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now, 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 let's look here in Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8. Glory to God. Shiki malalabashatalabaka. In Matthew chapter 8, we see right here, and it says that when he was come down from the mountain, great multitude followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Now see, this leper did not understand, he didn't understand what was going on. He just knew that this something was strange about this man, and this man could do something for him that, that no one else could. Amen. So this leper came to him, and he worshipped him. But notice, he did not worship him in doubt. He did not worship him in fear. He did not worship him in unbelief. He worshiped him in faith, believing. Because notice what he said. Lord, if thou wilt, thou can't make me clean. Thou can't make me clean. Well, because he didn't know, he still received what he asked for because he did not doubt the Lord. But he still acts in faith. Amen. He still acts in faith. Notice what it goes on to say right here. And Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will. Notice what he said? I will. What is he doing? He's releasing a supernatural force to bring deliverance to a leper diseased man. I will. The word I will had the ability to deliver this man. Glory to God. Glory to God. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest for a testimony unto them. Amen. Amen. We see the power of the word Look here in verse number, verse number five, verse number five, Matthew eight and five says, "And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there coming there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of a palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord." I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only. But speak the word only. 
The centurion knew that this man was a man of authority. He knew that this man talked with, with, he talked with power and he spake with power and he acted in authority as God had sent him. Amen. And he knew that this man, that had, if he said it, it was going to happen because that was a, when Jesus opened up his mouth to speak, it was a supernatural force that was, that was taking those words into the atmosphere and bringing them to pass. He had, he had, when Jesus spoke, he didn't have to worry about it. Because when he spoke, he spoke in faith. He spoke in faith. And God is telling us the power of our word when we speak the word of God in faith, release the God kind of faith. In other words, the supernatural force to go forth and to bring the path that desire that God intended for you to see or to come to pass in your life. Because God is going to do something in these last days. And now is the time and the season that it shall spring forth. Now is the time and the season that it shall spring forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to know, are you ready? Are you ready to experience God's supernatural force in your life? Are you ready to take a bold stand for the kingdom of God? Are you ready to minister to someone where they look like there's no hope for them. Amen. That cancer has been eating up their bodies and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, because that, because that cancer can eat up their bodies, now God has given you the ability to declare his word. And all you got to do is just speak what God has said and you will see the hand of God on your behalf. What are you doing? You're releasing a supernatural force out of your heart and out of your mouth. The Bible tells us in, in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 22. I think it's verse number 22. He said, let me just turn there to be, be sure. I, I believe that God, God is speaking to our hearts today. And I'm going, I, I don't want to give you nothing that God is not saying. I don't want to tell you nothing that God is not saying. Amen. So he says in verse, in, in verse number verse number. Uh, Verse, verse number 23, verse number 22, I mean, verse number 22 said, for, for they are life to those that find them. What is he talking about life? He's talking about his word. His word is life. His word is life. When we take the word of God and speak it, we are speaking life. We are releasing a supernatural force that will override death, that will override sickness, that will override diseases. Because the God kind of faith is override the things of the natural. Because we are not operating from the natural. We are operating from the supernatural. Glory to God. So it says right here, look at verse number 21. It says, let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them. Now notice what it said. And help to all their flesh. And help to all the flesh. So when I pray for the sick, when I release my faith for the sick, I'm releasing a supernatural force that God has placed within my heart to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bring wholeness to that person. Amen. And God has given you that same ability. He's given you that same ability to speak. Thus said the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. And you know the Bible says in, in Mark chapter in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 20, the Lord said that he confirmed his word with sign and follow. So you don't have to worry about it. It's not your job to confirm the word. God said he will confirm the word. He said he will confirm the word. Amen. With sign and follow. Amen. And so when we what we have to do, we have to just simply believe the word, what God has given us. Simply believe the word. Amen. Simply believe the word. Now I'm going to take you. <clears throat> we've been talking about all this in the New Testament this morning. Now I'm this afternoon, but now I want to I want I want to take you to another section of scripture. Amen. To another section of scripture that will that 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 will uh, help us to see that it was not just the New Testament people operating in such a in such a manner, but in the Old Testament we can see that. The hand of God was very much present in those days. Amen. The hand of God was very much present in those days. And when we understand, when we see this and, and, and see what God was doing, my God, we will we'll, we'll, we'll experience God's goodness. We will experience God's best like never before. 
Oh, I believe that with all my heart. Because see, we are entering into a season where God is about to showcase his church. Amen. And that's why he tells us in, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10. He says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he tells us what to do from that point. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Because see, when you go out there ministering the word of God, you can't walk out in your own, you can't walk out of thinking that you walk in your own strength, you walk in your own ability. Because the devil will have you for lunch. Amen. You got to see yourself walking in his strength. You got to see yourself walking in his ability. You got to see yourself walking in his armor. Not in your armor. Amen. But in his armor. You got to see yourself walking with your arm girded by the truth and having a breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the God of peace. And above all, taking that shield of faith to quench every fire of God that the devil throws at you. Amen. And taking the helmet of salvation, putting it on your head to protect you. Amen. And then, and then taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and going forth, declaring what God has said. You got to see yourself the way God sees you. God sees you as more than a conqueror. God sees you as more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Now I want you to look with me in first in the second king. Second king. Glory to God. Second king. Because see, your faith is your faith is the only thing that God can be, that, that could that can move the hand of God. Your faith is the only thing that can move the hand of God. It don't matter how much you cry. You can't move the hand of God with your tears. It doesn't matter how much you complain. You can't move God by your moaning and groaning. You can't move the hand of God because of what somebody else did. You can only move the hand, you can only move the hand of God by what you believe and by what you act on in faith. Because see, God is not going to be moved by us crying because if God was moved by us crying, no one would have any problem because everybody cried. Amen. But God is not moved by having the tears that are shed. God is moved by what we believe in our heart to be true and acted upon. Amen. And acted upon. Glory to His name. Oh, I feel something in this place today. There's a Holy Spirit moving in my in my soul like I've never experienced before. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the power of God being released right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Oh, God, those that are listening by the internet, those that are in, in here in this building with me, God, and those that were here from days to come, I release that anointing right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Because, see, God is a supernatural God. And he gave us a supernatural force of faith. And it's working through us as we obey the word of God. This is how it works, folks. It works through obedience to the word of God. It don't work by crying. It don't work by shedding a crocodile tear. It works by standing on the promise of God in obedience to what God has said. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. I walk in divine help in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And so what we look, so we're looking at, and now what we're looking at here in first is in Second Kings chapter four. The so supernatural see, faith is a uh, there's a supernatural force of faith working through obedience to the word of God spoken from God's servant. Amen. See, I am a servant of God. And when I speak to you the things of God, your heart has to be open to receive the message that I'm speaking because to the degree that you receive what God has given me to, to, to declare to you, to the degree that you receive it will determine the force that will work out of you. Amen. Will determine the supernatural force that works out of you. Because if you can't receive what I'm saying, then that force that I'm talking about will not work for you. Because you are not believing the, the word of God from the man of God that God has given the message to. Amen. Notice right here in, in 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Let me just turn here. Amen. Because I've got I got I, I, I gotta share this with you because see if you if you see this in the word then you 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 might just believe 
what I'm telling you is true. And you might just begin to act upon it. And that's my heart desire. That's what I really want to see. I want to see that you believe and that you begin to act upon what you believe. Amen. Because there you will see the mighty power of God operating in your life. Glory to God. So we say right here in verse number one. Now, just, 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 just listen to me now. Verse number one. And it says, go ahead and turn your Bible, uh, 7 Kings chapter 4, verse number 1. Now there cried a certain a certain woman of uh, there, there, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elijah. Unto Elijah. Now notice, this woman, she was the wife of one of the, the servants that waited on God, that served the prophet, that served, amen, was a true servant. Now notice what he said. Notice what he said. Saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. That he did fear the Lord. And the creditors is come to take my, to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Now notice, this woman, husband, feared God, and he served. Now, the creditors has come to take this woman's sons because she was not able to pay. But now listen, folks, the man of God is about to speak. A word. Now you need to see the you need to see the power in the word that this man speaks. He's releasing a supernatural force in his words. Now these words that this man speaks, they could work for this woman, or they could not work for this woman. It was dependent on how she heard the word and how she acted upon what she heard. When she heard the man of God, she received what he was saying. Now notice what happened. Notice what happened, verse number two. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. And what, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaiden had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. And he said, Go borrow, know what the man of God tell. He tell her to do something so very unethical. He's telling her to do something so outrageous. He's telling her to do something that really did not make any sense. But he's telling her what to do. Now, she had to either obey the man of God or not obey the man of God. To not obey the man of God, her son would have gone into captivity, would have gone to be bondsman. But to obey the man of God, Oh, glory. Not only was she able to pay off the debt, but she had money to live on from the rest of it. Notice what it says right here. So, because see, your obedience is required for supernatural, for the supernatural force to work through you. You must have a heart. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you, you know, I, I, I come up with a lot of people, and they think, they think that they have learned all that they need to learn because they have a, a PhD by the end, end of their name, or, or, or because they have a doctorate at the end of their name. And they think that someone that don't have these letters behind their name you can't tell them nothing. Amen? I want to tell you something. If the born again Spirit of God Live on the end. If, the, if the Spirit of God lives on the inside of a, boy, of, of a man, and that man is operating in the faith of God, that man can tell that man with a PhD something. He can tell that man with that dark degree something. Now, whether he believe it and act upon it will be upon his own head. But let me tell you something. Don't never come to a point where you think that you know it all. Because that's when you are. Uh, Get ready to fall down. Amen. That's when you're ready, about to fall down. Always be teachable. Always have to be willing to hear. Be willing to 
to hear. Now notice what he said, verse number three. Then she said, then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Now he's telling her to do something that was so unethical. Amen. Why? Because he is causing her to release a supernatural force. See, it was her act of obedience that caused that supernatural force to cause that oil to be released into those vessels. If she had not acted upon that word, that force that was in her would not have risen up to bring about that supernatural intervention at that time. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? But because she heard what the man of God said, she honored him in obedience, which in return caused a supernatural force to rise up within her heart. And as she got those vessels, she came to the man of God again. Notice what he said. Notice what he said. Verse number four. And when thou had come, verse number three, verse number three, go back to verse number three. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou had come in, notice what he said, he gave her instruction, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy son, and upon thy son, and shall, notice what he said, pour out into all those vessels. Now, this woman, from a natural standpoint, know that there was not enough oil to pour in all those vessels. <coughs> But she believed what the man of God said. Because she believed that, she released her faith in what he said. And her faith and obedience to what he said caused that supernatural force on the inside of her to rise up. The ability of God rose up on the inside of her and released God's supernatural ability to bring something out of a little to become much. God poured out of that cruise of oil all that she needed to pay off her debt and then some. It was her obedience to God's word that came out of the servant of God's mouth that caused that supernatural force of faith to be activated in her life that caused her to be sustained in the time when she didn't know what to do. She called upon the man of God and the man of God gave her a word and she acted on the word of God in faith and in obedience and she received the promise. And God is going to do the same for you today. God is going you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. And he wants you to act upon the word of God like you never act before. Because we are in the last day. We're in the dark stage of this age. And we are the light of the world. We got to be willing to speak what God has said regardless of what it looks like. Regardless of what people are saying. We got to be willing to take a stand for righteousness and despise the wrong. And look to God as our strength, as our fortress, as our shield, as our bubble. Not looking at the circumstances, but keeping our eyes upon him. And we can be held up just like Peter when he came out of that ship and said, Lord, if it be me, bid me to come to you on the water. And Peter heard him say, come. Peter did not walk out on the water. He walked out on that supernatural word that was able to hold him up. That word had a supernatural force beneath it that held him up. And that word was come. And God has given us that same ability. He's given us that force. He's given us that power. He's given us his abilities to work in us and through us to bring about a supernatural act of God's presence in this earth today. Hallelujah. Are you willing to take a bold stand for the kingdom of God today? Oh, I got much more that I can share with you, but I'm, I can't go no further with this message today. But don't forget, I got one more time. I have one more section on this, on this message. One more section. Next Sunday morning, next Sunday afternoon, we're going to be sharing this message one more time. And we're going to put the icing on the cake on next Sunday. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me right now. 
Because I know that I'm giving you something what God has declared. I know that I'm not giving you something that I want you to have. I'm giving you what thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, it's time for us to prepare to go into our communion service. Amen. I want all of you that's going to be taking communion with us, I want you right now to get your juice and your cracker ready. Get your juice and your cracker ready. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And everyone that's going to be taking communion with us, just get ready. We're going to be taking communion in a minute. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. And he is sitting on the throne. And he's high and lifted up. And friend, I want you to be ready because during this time of communion, I believe that God is going to speak to our hearts once again. And I want you to receive the promise of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I want you all that are listening by the internet right now that's going to be doing, taking communion with us. I want you right now to get your bread and your crackers. Amen. And I want you to turn your Bible with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Glory to God. And I want us to look at verse number 23. Hallelujah. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often that ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoso shall, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and, and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So let us examine our hearts right now. Those of you that are listening to us by the internet, those that are viewed by the internet, let us all examine our hearts right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man and every woman that will be go, that will be do, taking communion with us. And I pray, Father, that should there be any sin in the lives of any of us, Lord, that you will forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we make this confession before we go any further, Lord God, I ask that we make this confession from our heart in Jesus' name. 
So say this prayer with me, you that are listening by the internet, and you that are here with me today. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I repent, and I ask you to come into my heart afresh in you. I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe, Jesus, that you died for my sin. As I confess my sin today, I believe that my sins have been forgiven. Thank you for forgiving me of the sin. Amen. If you said that prayer with me right now, no matter what you've done, it's under the blood. God has forgiven you and you have a right to go forth now in this communion. Amen. Now, take your bread in your hand. Hold up before the Lord. I'm going to bless it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, that you was wounded for our transgressions. You was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our feet was upon you. And it was with your stripes, Lord, that we are healed. So, Father, I thank you for your brokenness, for your body that was broken for the healing of all humanity. And as we partake of this bread, God, it is no longer bread. Because right now, Father, I sanctify this and I declare that it's been transformed now from its common use to its spiritual use. It is now the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. So Father, as we take of this body and eat it, we say, Lord, we remember what you did for us on Calvary, how you took those stripes upon your back in, the, in, in Pontius Pilate courtyard, and how they led you to Golgotha Hill, and as you carried that cross upon your own shoulder, oh Lord Jesus, we remember the agony and the suffering that you endured for us, the children of Almighty God. And as we partake of this, we remember and we just say, Lord, thank you for your healing power that is working in us. Let us eat and let us receive our healing as we eat. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Father. We receive your healing power, Father, in our bodies right now as we partake of this communion bread. Hallelujah. Yes. And Father, we worship you. We thank you, Father. Your healing power has been released all over this atmosphere. Your healing power is released all through the atmosphere. Oh God, and it is released over everyone under the sound of my voice. Those of whom are partaking communion with us, Lord God, the same healing power that is in this room is being released over them right now in Jesus' name. I curse every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. Go in Jesus' name. And Father, let your healing power begin to rest upon them because you bore our sickness and you carried our disease and it was by your strife that we are healed and we receive our healing now. Say, I receive my healing. Say it again, I receive my healing. Say, I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your healing power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now take this cup. Take your, take your drink. Now as you hold it up before the Lord, say, I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary, on Golgotha Hill. Father, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that as they pierced him, as they hung him up on that cross, and they pierced him in the side, out came from his body both blood and water. 
The blood was for the redemption of all humanity. And Father, I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. It was because of the shed blood of Jesus that we are able to stand before you, a holy God, today to declare your goodness and your mercies endured forever. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for the blood that was shed for us. Because of the blood, we're able to stand before you, a holy God, as if though we have never sinned. Father, we thank you and we bless you right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we look at this right now as of the natural. But as I pray over this right now, I sanctify in the name of Jesus. And now I declare that it be transformed from his common use to his spiritual purpose that we have, that we are holding it today in our hand. Father, we thank you for this communion service today. Now, Lord, as we drink of this cup, Father, we declare in our heart that we remember, we remember what you did for us on Calvary. We remember the deliverance that took place on Calvary because of the blood that was shed. Now, Father, as we partake of this cup right now, we say, Lord, thank you for not forgetting us. Let us drink together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, it was the blood. Oh, the blood. The blood that washes us white as snow. It's the blood that makes us clean. It's the blood that makes us clean. Oh, thank you for the blood, Lord God. I worship you, Father. I thank you for the shedding of your blood, Lord Jesus. Oh, I thank you. I worship you and I give you glory for it, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, for you that are, that are with us, we're going to go ahead right now and receive our offering for today. Amen. We're going to go ahead and receive our offering for today. Hallelujah. Those of you that's going to be sowing, uh, those of you that have been sowing uh, to us throughout the year of 2015, you will be receiving in the mail. Uh, it's going in the mail Monday. Uh, your uh, paper for your of your giving so that you can receive, uh, so you can uh, uh, record it in your taxes and you can receive. Uh, as you will, amen. But you will, it will be going out this Monday in the mail so that you can put it with your taxes, amen. Those of you that have been given it. We thank God for all your support through the year 2015. And I'm asking God that He will multiply back into your life this year that you will be able to double what you did last year, amen. Double what you did last year so that we can know that God. I'm telling you, God is going to bless you above and beyond your wildest dreams. Amen. Glory to God. Because I'm claiming double. I'm claiming double for your trouble. God, I'm asking God to multiply double back into your life. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now, as you prepare to give your tithe and your offering, remember those of you that are sowing by the internet, go to my website, NiagaraRiverMinistries.com. And there you may use your credit card, your debit card, your MasterCard, Visa card, or your Discovery card, or your, or your uh, whatever card that God is, that you've been blessed with. And you may plant your seed there. Amen. Amen. And also, those of you that's going to be given through the mail postal service, amen, you may make your check payable to Larry Ministries. And mail it to P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Be sure to send us your prayer request if you have one or you have a testimony. Please share with us your testimony also. Amen. We would love to share it with the congregation. Amen. And uh, 
Let's pray. Father, as we prepare to give out tithes and our offering, Lord God, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as we give, Father, that we will realize we're not giving to man, but we're giving to you. And that we don't have to look to man for the return, but we look to you. Because you said in your word, as we give, it shall be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaped together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. So, Father, as we give, we expect a miracle, a financial breakthrough. We expect, Lord God, that the kingdom of God, even though it's some violent, the violent must take it by force. And we release that force of faith right now, that supernatural force. And we declare the spirit of poverty and lack is defeated in our life because we are walking in obedience to your word in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Let us receive our tithes and offerings today. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Get my water out. Well, see, I want to plant some seed today myself in this ground. Why? Because it's rich ground. This is rich ground. God said it, and I believe it. And so I plant my seed here. Amen. Glory to God. I'm a blessed man because I'm a tiger and I'm a giver. And as you become a tiger and a giver, a giver, what I mean by tithing and giving, that's giving above and beyond your tithes. That's when you begin to experience the blessing of God on your life like never before. Oh yeah, here goes someone brought in the offering today. Amen. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this offering. I bless this offering. I sanctify this offering. I, and as you hold this offering up before your Father, I pray that, Lord God, that you receive this offering as blessed, sanctified, and meet for the Master's use. And God, I pray that you multiply back into our lives, good measure, press down, chicken together, according to your word, because you're not a man in your life. But God, you shall multiply back into our lives that we will have more to give. More to give. And God, I bless this offering. I sanctify it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now, hallelujah. I want to thank you all for joining us. If you have a special prayer request right now, those of you that have special prayer requests, I will pray with you right now. Father, hmm? you got a call? Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that force of faith right now and I rebuke that cough off my door. Say, you cannot touch her. You cannot allow that. I will not allow your hand to rest upon her. I will not allow your demons to mess with her. Now take your hand off of her in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, I command that cough to go. And I thank you for it, Father. And I say, Father, her nasal system, her chest, no, no, nasal system is cleared up and healed now. In Jesus' name. And I thank you for it. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Father, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release divine help and healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And I declare, Father, that God, no sickness or disease will dwell in her body. Every germ virus that touches her body will die in the name of Jesus. And I give you glory and praise for it. And I declare that it's so now. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother. And I thank you, Lord God, that as he has come, Father, I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch him today from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. I release your anointing, your miracle working power in his life. I thank you, Father, for the, the, the word of God that will penetrate every fiber of his being. And that word will not return for it. I release divine help and healing to every organ, every tissue, Lord God. And I declare, Father, that he will walk in divine help. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's pray for those that are listening, those that are here by the internet. Father, I pray for those that are listening. 
and those that are here by the internet right now, I release my faith right now, Father, on their behalf, and I bind every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. I release the spirit of faith right now, Father, to flow freely, to freely as I receive it, freely give it. So, Father, I release your word. God, you sent your word to heal. You said the healing of the children's bread. I release your healing right now that the children may eat of the bread that you have given to them freely in Jesus' name and receive their healing. Right now, I rebuke every sickness, every disease, every virus, every germ that will try to attach itself to their bodies. And Father, I release divine health from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Receive your healing. Receive your blessing right now. In Jesus' name, this is Pastor Larry. I enjoy being with you. Enjoy bringing you the word today. Remember, there's a supernatural force on the inside of you. And as you begin to apply the word of God, it will come forth in God's supernatural power. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Have a good day. Hallelujah. Thank God for all of you that was with us today. And I know that God has touched your lives and enriched your faith through this message as it has ours here. And I believe that you are going to experience the greatness of God like you've never experienced before. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Remember, there's a supernatural force on the inside of you waiting for you to take a hold and let it come forth in faith. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.